Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Renarb Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about comic books, comic book kickstarters, comic shops, all sorts of fun stuff like that, and uh, where you can get the comic books I've read, and where you can back the kickstarters that are currently going. And uh, all right, let's begin with. Uh, this is not a comic book, but this is. I am still in the Netflix thing, where I get the discs in the mail. And I have been watching a show called Picard. You may know what that is. It's a Star Trek thing with uh, Patrick Stewart. I'm loving it. It's awesome. Uh, I get two discs a month through this plan. Uh, I've been doing the DVD plan since 2002, I think. I don't think there was really much of an instant uh, streaming service back then. But, uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying Picard. And... Uh, it's, it's an awesome show. It, it's a different Star Trek than I'm used to uh, because, yeah, they're kind of on a rogue mission. That's what's really entertaining about this version of Star Trek. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, enough about shows and let's get on to a comic book. This comic book is, uh, for one, it is freaking beautiful and uh, it's, it's a very, very entertaining read. This is For Goodness Sake by... Uh, Kaylin Smith, that's right, she does the art and the uh, story. The story is amazing. Um, this is the second volume. Uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Oh, I even got an autograph in there. Check that out. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, I really love this art style. Every every character looks amazing. Uh, it, the, main, the story is about... Uh, this guy named Thatcher, that's him, he's got red skin, and uh, he's been cursed with, uh, he looks like a demon, and he's got horns, pointy ears, all that fun stuff, and he meets this girl named Rain. It's not spelled like your typical Rain, though. Uh, anyway, he meets this girl named Rain, and she is set on uh, helping him, so all that fun stuff. Let's see here. I was about to show you a page, but it has a swear word on it, and I don't know if that's what I want to show right now. So, check this out. She's teasing him, and he's getting ornery with her, and he turns more red the uh, madder and meaner he is. If he's nice to someone, he turns uh, normal colored. So, let's see. Yeah, there he is, actually. He's normal colored. There's a flashback before the uh, curse. Anyway, yeah, uh, these goons are chasing him, and we find out in this that uh, he he knows what the cause of his curse is, and it's a little it's pretty heartbreaking when uh, he tells her what that what causes the curse. Anyway, yeah, because uh, she lost the main character here, uh, Rain. She lost a sister to a crazy accident. She was riding her bike to the post office and got run over. And, yeah. And then shortly after that, her her mom died. Uh, I'm assuming from a broken heart or illnesses, stuff like that. So, it's pretty crazy. Good stuff. I'm really enjoying this story. And the best part is I could get the next volume pretty soon. Uh, the Kickstarter for Volume 3 is currently running on Kickstarter until... April 9th. April 9th is awesome. And, uh, yeah. So check out, for goodness sake, if you get if you go onto the Kickstarter, you could get Volumes 1, 2, and 3 all in one bundle. I, it is highly worth it. I, I highly recommend you get check out this, uh, for goodness sake. Really good stuff. I'm even getting a, uh, a comic from the same creator uh, called Loot. It's in the mail on the way to me right now from Scout Comics. So if you're interested in that, loot was only a dollar ninety nine for the hard copy, and so I'm getting the hard copy of loot. It's in the mail right now. For goodness sake, is on Kickstarter right now until April 9th. Check this out. It even came with a sticker. They've been doing a road trip, so this is from a national forest sticker that'll be going on my box of comics and a bookmark. And she's pointing out where your spot is right there. 
But then on the back, it has Thatcher, and he's saying, you're a quitter for stop reading. So, that's awesome. I love it. It's good stuff. For goodness sake, volume two. Check it out on Kickstarter. All that fun stuff. Now, on to one of my favorites. All right, where's my notes? Miskatonic High, number nine. Ooh, we're up to nine now. So, Miskatonic High, number nine. It came with a card. They do this... There's a card that comes with every book that I've backed on Kickstarter. That's awesome. And this was an invitation to a party. So it invites Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios Comics. You are invited. That's pretty cool. To the Yellow King Inn. So this that's what this story is. This story is about the Yellow King Inn. And uh, the main character here, well... The whole group is like a breakfast club of uh, kids, each with their own different quirk, superpower kind of uh, problem. And Anton here is a ghost. So he goes to the uh, the Yellow King Inn in his ghost form, and uh, he finds out that the, whole, the basement is chock full of other ghosts that uh, died in a fire there. So that's pretty cool. Um, Anton here is... He's. I, I really love how uh, they do their previously pages too. They have one character talk about all all the stuff that's gonna happen. Anyway, so these main there's these main characters. Um, I, I lost my track. I keep saying main characters too much. Anyway, um, let's see. Ren here. Ren and Alex. I think that's their names. Yeah. Ren and Alex are the only two people of the group that can see Anton. Uh, cause, because they can see ghosts. And uh, so that makes it interesting. He hangs around them a lot and uh, stuff. But he goes to this inn while they're preparing for it's Thanksgiving and they are feeding the homeless. And so while they're there, Anton wanders around, sees all the other ghosts there and stuff. And he, he goes and hangs out with the, uh, the group down in the basement because the basement used to be a speakeasy back in the uh, 20s and 30s. So Anton's down there, and he finds out that uh, Moonshine actually makes uh, ghosts tangible. And so that's pretty cool stuff. This scene even right here uh, makes me think, makes me kind of wish for a crossover between another comic about ghosts. Uh, it'd be really awesome if uh, the Miskatonic High guys teamed up with uh, the people over at Ovation Comics and did a goth ghost girl. Um crossover that'd be awesome anyway strain a little bit so yeah he meets this he meets this guy and hangs out with him as a ghost he shows him the ropes but then this, out of nowhere this crazy uh monster shows up and it eats ghosts so that's pretty crazy uh then then he's on the run he's try he goes he tries to get some help from uh alex and ren tries to tell them, hey, there's something going on, but they're like, dude, we're sick of your crap, go away. And so uh, he's like, whatever. And he, he's, he's left tra to his own devices, and he's trying to figure things out on his own. Really good stuff. I really enjoyed this issue. A lot of, lot of energy, a lot of excitement, a lot of ghost stuff going on. And, uh, yeah, it was cool stuff. And so, uh, yeah, we get, we get some more mystery involved into it and then we get some more behind the scenes after we read the comic that was really cool stuff uh, I always enjoy Miss Katonic High's behind the scenes of uh, how they came up with stories and uh, just little things that kind of like hey uh, I've always wanted to do this is what the writer says or the artist and the writer's like yeah I guess we can do that and they do it that's pretty cool stuff there's some pinups in the back these are uh, some of the uh, pinups that they send out and stuff, alternate covers. And then there's the thank you page, and it says, Thank you, Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios Comics. I love it when they put my full name on there. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah, and then they say in the next issue coming up, issue 10, which I think is on Kickstarter right now. And... Uh, 
Lovecraft P.I. meets Miskatonic High, which is actually next in my uh, reading list, I think. So that'll be cool. I can't wait to read those. I've got issues one and two already, and I have extra sets of those. I always get two of uh, all Miskatonic High comics because I back it, and then uh, I have a friend named Brooke that I got hooked on them, so I'm handing off uh, the second copies to Brooke. So uh, pretty soon I'll be reading Lovecraft P.I. meets Miskatonic High and uh, handing off one to Brooke. Sometime, one of these times, I ought to get a, uh, do an episode with Brooke and see what he thinks of this Miskatonic High stuff. Really cool stuff. So that's all my reviews for today. Now I'm going to move on to the mailbox section. What have I got in my mailbox this week? Oh man, it's been a good week for com for my mailbox. Um, I got Starlight in the mail. Starlight is a, com a comic I backed on Kickstarter. It's got a bookmark. Check that out. Starlight is about these kids that uh, used to be superheroes back when they were younger, and now that they're grown up, they have uh, disappeared from the limelight. But their mom has been kidnapped by aliens, so now they're in space, on a spaceship, and I don't know what happens after that. They're just on a quest to find their mom, get her back from these aliens. So that is some cool stuff. Can't wait to read that. Putting Starlight in my mailbox or in my read pile. It's already in, came in my mailbox. Oh, and speaking of, here's Lovecraft, P.I. meets Miskatonic High, two of two. I've got two different copies of issue two here. Oh, it looks like there's a print in there too. I'll have to check that out. I haven't opened it up yet. So these are going into my read pile and I've got to get, send off, take one to work and give it to Brooke. I wonder, I always let him decide which cover he wants. Because I like both of them, and I can't, I, I can't make decisions like that. It's too tough, because both of these covers are amazing. That's awesome. So, and I also got Love University number three. Ooh, we're up to number three now. This has been a really fun story about a girl who's training to be a Cupid. There is a, a print pinup with it, and I guess the creators were worried about it taking so long so they threw in two bonus comics here this is armor number one and here we got uh, will-o-wisp number one so I got two bonus comics I wasn't even expecting those but they are awesome they will go in my read pile and get a review so that's pretty cool stuff uh, these are from Evolution. Evolution? Evo is it Evolution? If I'm pronouncing that right, uh, let me know. Evolution. So they are from Evolution Publishing, and uh, I have backed a couple things from Evolution Publishing. They do uh, pretty awesome stuff, especially that Love University. So check those out. Um, now we're going to go on to a section of my show where I talk about Kickstarters, and I decided to name this the Campaign Corner. So. First off in the campaign campaign corner is a comic called A Causal Number One. It is on Kickstarter till March 19th. It is a fast-paced crime comic with a hint of sci-fi, written by John Ward, illustrated by Ev Cantata, and lettered by Lucas Gattoni. The story of Tara Becker, a disillusioned RCMP officer. Did I write down what that means? Um, nope. Who must learn to trust a pair of determined criminals that are receiving messages from the future. Only by working together can this unlikely trio stop a, a maniacal anarchist terrorist from destroying Toronto. I love that it's uh, taking place in Toronto because uh, most most comics always take place in the New York or California. It, it gets tiresome, especially from for someone who lives in Utah, it's like, we get it, New York, things happen there all the time. So, A Causal, number one, is on Kickstarter until March 19th. Check that one out. That's some good stuff. Uh, that one's ending soon. March 19th is not very far away. What is it, the 18th? Yeah, so that's ending tomorrow. Check that one out. Next up is one that's also ending tomorrow, is Tessellation. Is it? 
18th? Yeah, it's the 18th. So these are ending tomorrow. Tessellation number one is a 30 page first issue of a uh, unique Infinite Realities comic. It is Sliding Doors meets the game in the multiverse. So, uh, yeah, the artwork on this one looks amazing. Uh, the, the preview I read looks amazing. Check out Tessellation number one on Kickstarter till tomorrow, March 19th. Hollowed number three is on Kickstarter until March 19th. Hollowed is one I, I just recently reviewed issues one and two. It's really cool, graffiti stylish art, uh, really bombastic and uh, energetic art style. The writing is awesome. It is about two detectives that are um, that are from one's from New York, one's from Chicago, and they are both working on the same case of, of a serial killer who is hollowing out his victims. And so they're on this case, but by the end of the second issue, it seems like there might be more than just more going on than just a serial killer. It seems like it might be a corporation kind of thing going on. So. It's really cool. It's getting mysterious, and uh, the artwork is amazing. And I think there's even a soundtrack to it, but I don't know. I'm kind of weird with that. I don't know. Technology's not really my strong suit, so I haven't checked out the soundtrack yet. But uh, yeah, there is even a soundtrack that goes along with the comic book. Check it out. Hollowed number three. You can get issues one through three in the whole bundle on Kickstarter till March 19th tomorrow. Next on my list is Marcy Sparks, The Omnibus 1 and 2. You can get these in hardcover or softcover, and they have NFT upgrades, which is a non-fungal tokens. I don't know what that is. Some kind of spot finish or something. Every issue of ever of Heaven's Secret Little Bounty Hunter is being collected into this omnibus. And uh, this is this is pretty cool. I like so far I I just bought my first uh, omnibus that I've ever owned and that is the hack slash omnibus and it was awesome. It was an it's a very fun read and this seems like it's right up on those same kind of lines. Marcy Sparks is about a uh, a demon that heaven hires to go hunting down uh, angels that have gone rogue. So check it out. Uh, Mercy Sparks omnibus one and two are on Kickstarter until March 20th. It is like a thousand pages all in these two omnibuses, so that's awesome. Bet Noir 1 through 3 is on Kickstarter right now. A mysterious vigilante enacts a plan of brutal revenge against those that have wronged him. A dark, twisted tale of vengeance and pain. A, a world without its heroes only the villains remained, but a ghost of the past has returned to exact bloody revenge. Check out Bet Noir on Kickstarter right now till March 21st. Glarian of White Ash, number one. Glarian of White Ash, I, I read this, the uh, preview and it was amazing. Uh, I, I didn't read too much of it because I, I'm holding out for the physical copy. I'm a I'm a lover of the physical copies, and uh, White Ash is an awesome universe. Love White Ash stuff. Stuff. If you post the name White Ash on something, and Charlie Stigney and uh, Connor Hughes, any of those names attached to any project White Ash, I'm backing it because they are so good. I'm loving it. Glarian of White Ash is being illustrated by different people. Uh, I only have their Twitter handles on here right now, so sorry about that. I'm not going to shout them out. But Glaring of White Ash, number one, looks amazing. The preview, little sample of a couple pages of it, blows me away. It is insane. And uh, it is adult-themed, um, so do not buy this comic for your kids. But if you, if you don't shy away from that kind of stuff... Um, this is the comic book for you. Check out Galarian of White Ash on Kickstarter till March 25th. Next up on Kickstarter is Miskatonic High 10. Awesome. So that's the book that I need to read next. And uh, I can't wait to see where it's going from here. Uh, these kids are amazing. Uh, I've never really been a Lovecraft fan, but these comics have really been... Uh, Maybe I have been a Lovecraft fan all along. I just didn't. I've never actually read Lovecraft himself, himself, 
And, uh, but I've read a lot of people that have been influenced by him, like Dean Koontz is one of my favorites since I was seven. Anyway, that's not what this is about. Miskatonic High 10 is on Kickstarter right now until March 25th. The art's always amazing. I'm never disappointed in that. Um, the story's always amazing. Check out Miskatonic High 10 on Kickstarter till March 25th. Neil, number one, N-I-L, is he's a survivor of a decimated tribal nation that battles he has to battle his anger and his grief as he integrates into modern society with a dinosaur companion so the uh, preview pages I saw which the art on this is insane if I could draw like that I don't know what I would do but it looks awesome uh, it shows him he's going to school and he has a, he has his dinosaur he doesn't take him to school with him though but uh, yeah, it's awesome. He's got this awesome tribal tattoo right on his face. It looks really uh, Hawaiian, Maori kind of style. And uh, it looks really cool. So check out Neil, number one, on Kickstarter till March 26th. Next up is uh, Heaven's Bestiary Enamel Pins. Uh, this is a 12 set of pins that show, depicts the entire uh, Chinese zodiac. It's a combination of uh, white, black, and gold in, to create each of these images. You could get a random pin. The lowest thing on the Kickstarter is a random pin for $9. Or you could choose which pin you want, which zodiac you want, for $10. And if you want two more or three more, the price keeps going up and up and up until you get the whole full 12 and all the other perks that come with it. Anyway, I'm a fan of enamel pins, so... These looked really cool, and uh, check them out. Heavens, Bestiary Enamel Pins on Kickstarter until March 26th. Of the same coin is about uh, two detectives. Let's see here. What is this? Someone's calling me, and I don't know the number. Anyway, two detectives, and they both believe that they are working... They're the walking epitones of justice, but they are on opposite sides of the law. One is a private detector, detective, and one is working with the police. Anyway, it is a 32-page gritty crime thriller based in London. That looks awesome. Um, really cool stuff. Check out Of the Same Coin on Kickstarter till March 31st. Chronicles of the Immortal Swordsman, number one. It's a uh, campaign that Kickstarter loves. I noticed that. And uh, it is about a young man's heroic awakening into an ancient order of supernatural warriors facing a new civil war. This is a continuation of the Adept story that I reviewed a couple episodes ago. And the artwork looks amazing. They have a martial arts choreographer to help them get the poses right so that's pretty cool looking um, I'm pretty sure they, they're taking pictures of action scenes and drawing those right into the comics really cool stuff check out Chronicles of the Immortal Swordsman number one on Kickstarter till March 31st Speed of Light is on Indiegogo until April 1st uh, yeah I usually don't I'm, I don't surf Indiegogo looking for new things because the site's actually confusing to me. Um, they don't email you when your friends back something, so that, that's one thing they need, they should work on um, because I'd probably back more Indiegogos if I got a, an email every time someone I knew backed something. But anyway, I don't. Uh, that's one reason I back a lot of Kickstarters. Is, uh, I get an email that says, so-and-so back this, and I check it out. And if I, I, I get like 10 emails saying so-and-so back Galarian of White Ash number one and it's like oh man I need to hurry and get in on that but no nope, Indiegogo has nothing like that they send me weird things about hey check out this new camera anyway wow I'm really straying off subject here Speed of Light is on Indiegogo and the Speed of Light is a black and white sci-fi anthology by Evolution Publishings that's the people that make the uh, Love University and this will have nine eight-page stories by different creators. That is awesome. That's a lot of uh, pages, 72 pages total 
in artwork and uh, it looks awesome uh, I, I, I scrolled through it looks like some awesome stuff and so check out Speed of Light on Indiegogo until April 1st really cool stuff Starside the comic is uh, I think they're doing their fourth issue on Kickstarter and this is a series that I am really enjoying this is um, a a alien invasion came to Earth, and uh, now this boy is—he got grabbed by the aliens and brought into space. Now he's trying to find his sister, who is on another ship, and uh, it's really cool stuff. I don't even know what's—I need to re recap before I read the next issue because uh, it took it took a while. It, it's kind of lapsing from my mind. Anyway. I got an awesome pin from the last Kickstarter, the Starside emblem. I put it, wear it on my face mask when I have to go to work. It's pretty cool stuff. And uh, yeah, so Starside the comic is a sci-fi fantasy book about a teen who is thrown into an intergalactic war and discovers humanity's greater purpose. Check it out. Uh, I'm back in this until April 1st can't wait to get that. You could get issues one through four all in one bundle. You could get the pin added to yours. They have a cool patch that uh, you can iron on to your coat. So that look, that's pretty cool um, if you wanted to cosplay as the characters. Check out Co uh, Starside comic on Kickstarter till April Fool's Day. Sex and Violence number three, volume three. Um, 64 pages of an adult graphic novel it, is, it has excessive nudity and violence in it. Obviously, with the uh, with the title like "Sex and Violence," you're gonna it's gonna be something like that. This is from Jimmy Palmiotti and Justin Gray. Jimmy Palmiotti he does the Pop Kill comic that I recently backed, and J.V. Gray, Justin Gray, um, he's the guy that does the Standstill comic that um, that I backed a, a while ago. I can't they're in my read pile. I can't wait to read those. Um, Amanda Rancelot, she's pretty famous for her uh, Harley Quinn drawings. And there, there's a lot of names attached to this. Joseph Linzer is doing a cover. Uh, Frank Frazetta is the cover I'm getting. He's, um, he's really, really famous for drawing sexy women's. Uh, he's no longer with us, but his art still is. And Sarah Frazetta, uh, his daughter, is doing a cover also. So check it out. A lot of cool stuff. Um, Sex and Violence number three is on Kickstarter right now. I wish I could get one and two, but they're uh, not included in the, or, well, digital copies, but I want the hard copies. So if I can figure out a way to get Sex and Violence uh, volumes one and two, I'm going to figure that out. But for now, I'm just getting volume three hard copy with a Frank Frazetta cover. Can't wait. It looks awesome. Check it out. Planar Jane number two is on Kickstarter. Um, I'm new to this, so I'm backing it to get one and two together. It is a black, white, and red comic book. A modern day story of murder. Uh, Jane Pearson is, she's seemingly ordinary. She's a teenager and she becomes a brutally efficient assassin. The whole series is 150 pages broken into single issues for Kickstarter. I don't know how many pages each issue is but that's a 150 pages it's gonna be awesome I'm getting the first two issues can't wait and yeah it's colored in black white and red looks amazing check it out and uh, it's on Kickstarter till April 8th Ooh, here's a good one impossible Jones number two is on Kickstarter impossible Jones and the Holly days team up Holly days is kind of a, a Joker Harley Quinn kind of character where she uh, she fights with uh, holiday-based weapons, uh, menorah guns and candy cane claws, candy cane grappling hooks, all sorts of weird stuff. So check out uh, this girls' night out, hilarity hijinks, and hidden secrets in a 30-page, 32-page book uh, by Carl Kessel and David Hahn. Carl Kessel from Harley Quinn stories and David Hahn, drawer of artist illustrator of Batman 66. So it's got an awesome art style. The story is amazing. Um, it's got that Invincible kind of feel to it. So if you are a fan of Invincible and Harley Quinn, 
and Batman 66, all three of those combined into one story, you're getting Impossible Jones. Check it out. And uh, in, we are going to meet a villain named Krampus pretty soon, who is kind of the Joker to Holly Days's character. So check it out. Impossible Jones, volume number two. I don't know if it's volume or issue. Impossible Jones 2 on Kickstarter till April 8th. April 8th. That's the day the Elephant Man died. I think I remember something like that. Because in high school, there was a band, a local band called April 8th. Anyway, for goodness sake, volume 3. Oh, man. After reading that last volume, I cannot wait to get this. This is the complete series. This is the series finale. It, volume 3 of For Goodness Sake and oh man it's it's working up to be something really awesome so I can't wait to find out how this ends I'm gonna be sad because it's so good so this guy Thatcher who turns demonic every time he's a turd and off and which is often and a free-spirited rain who is trying to cure him of this curse but they soon learned that there is more to all of this than what they had thought that there is a deeper, darker secret that binds it all together. Sorry, my handwriting got really bad on that. So, check out For Goodness Sake, Volume 3 by Kaylin Smith, The Complete Series. You could get all three volumes. And uh, stickers and pins. Oh man, yeah, that's right. I got pins with this. Where's my pins? Hold on, it's five seconds. That's right, I can't not show you these pins because they were freaking awesome. There is my Thatcher pin. Let me get it out of the bag here. There's Thatcher. Check that pin out. Isn't he awesome? And I got a rain pin. Cool, cool, cool. Look at that. And I think uh, with volume three, I'm getting a pin of Copilot. He is a little blue dog that... Uh, lives in Rain's school bus RV kind of thing. So check these out. Oh, I'm holding it the wrong way. Rain and Thatcher. Pretty cool pins. And do check out, for goodness sake, Volume 3 on Kickstarter right now. You can get those pins. You can get other pins. You can get stickers. It's on Kickstarter till April 9th. Ooh. Now, Green Inferno, the world's world celebrates your demise a 200 page anthology of original horror fiction and comics from an international group of creators lurking just out of focus on the peripheral of our collective vision is a stark realization our planet's tolerance for mankind has reached its boiling point the earth is tired of us it is at the end of its rope check out green inferno on Kickstarter until April 12th. The Dancer, number one, is a psychological mar martial arts thriller. It is a dancer assassin is forced to deal with her childhood trauma of witnessing her parents' death. Really cool stuff. Uh, the artwork looks amazing and uh, I jumped in right away on this one. I, I think I joined the uh, Notify Me of the launch thing and so I backed it like the first day. Check out Dancer number one on Kickstarter till April 15th. Really cool stuff. And that is the last of my uh, Kickstarter corner. So now I'm going to move on to just other random things that's going on in my life. Uh, I've been, I finished up uh, WandaVision. It was really awesome. I hope you guys all finished it also. Really cool stuff. I was, I was sad that uh, the Pietro uh, didn't turn out to be the Fox X-Men kind of Pietro. I don't know. Uh, what I'm saying is uh, I'm, I don't know when Marvel is going to bring in the Fox Studios, but I really hope they do because I, I've i been waiting too long for a multiple man in anything other than that X-Men 3 multiple man because as cool as that was, he was just a diversion. It was disappointing. And that James Franco show that almost got made, I don't know what's going on there, but that should have got made. So, yeah, check out WandaVision. It was really cool. I enjoyed it. 
um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is starting tomorrow, so I can't wait to check that one out. Um, and as you know, I've been watching Picard, so I can't wait to get the rest of the discs. There's only three episodes on each disc, so they're quick watches. And um, my wife and I have been watching The Rookie with Nathan Fillion. It's a good one. Check it out. So that's my TV shows that I can tell you about. And, uh, oh yeah, I did start watching um, Lovecraft Country on the HBOs, so there's some more Lovecraft in my life. Podcasts. What have I been listening to? Um, I've been listening to Off Panel. With the most recent episode I listened to was with David Harper interviewing Andy Schmidt. Andy Schmidt is an awesome guy. He uh, did his own co uh, podcast for a while called Com Experience. Comics Experience, and uh, it's basically a how-to on pu self-publishing, things like that. He is a guy that he's worked on Multiple Man, of all things, and so obviously uh, I like the Andy Schmidt. That was a cool interview. Thank you off-panel David Harper for uh, doing that episode. Geek History Lesson right now is doing an e episode of Act of the Harkness, so that's next on my playlist, what I'm going to listen to the next time I go somewhere or do the dishes, whatever. Anyway, and that makes me wonder, uh, there's a couple podcasts I used to listen to that have disappeared. So if anything, that tells you, uh, you should let other people know what you're listening to so that they don't go away. Uh, so I'm wondering what happened to two that I listened to, Two Scout Geeks and the House of Indie podcast, which I think are done by the same people. Um, two Scout Geeks used to be just two guys who talked about all the Scout comics that were coming out, which I loved it because uh, I don't really have time to read the emails all the time that come from Scout comics, even though I do. That's how I ended up uh, ordering the Loot comic and By the Horns. They were coming in the same issue or order. But, yeah, it was nice to, you know, because uh, I can listen to these guys on my drive to work, and then when I get to work, go back through it and... Uh, scribble down what I need to order, stuff like that. So, I don't know. If you guys are out there listening to this, please come back. I miss you, Two Scout Geeks and House of Indy. And uh, For the Love of Indy is one that I miss. Uh, For the Love of Indy actually uh, uh, backed one of my campaigns a while ago, and so they were pretty cool stuff. Uh, they always talked about awesome campaigns, just like I am, and... Uh, I missed their input and on what's out there and stuff. Uh, I came across a lot of awesome Kickstarters through them. So if you are for the love of Indy, please come back. I miss your podcast. And uh, yeah, basically, things have been getting really busy for me. Uh, I know when I set out to do this show channel, Red and Art Studios channel on uh, YouTube, it wasn't intended to be a reviews channel, but because it's actually supposed to be uh, me making my comics, but I've been having some computer problems, and uh, I need to fix those so that I'm, I'm constantly working on that to try and get past it. I might just pull out my old laptop and uh, do those episodes on that one because I need to get back into making my own comic book, Peter Pan the Vampire. Uh, issue 4 has been too long. This pandemic has really hurt my production on it. I have not done a single page at all in the 2020s. Um, so, I yeah, I need to get back into that, working on that, uh, working on my comic book, because, yeah, and uh, I've got a side comic book, The Mermaids of Neverland, I need to work on. I was having, I originally was having a, my oldest daughter work on it, but she's since grown up and moved out of the house, and she did a couple of the pages, but didn't really finish it, and then I passed it on to another daughter, and she's more into doing her own OCs, which, you know, I don't blame her. That's her, It's a lot funner to draw your own OCs than draw your dad's. But, uh, so I'm going to just go into it, and I'm going to I'm gonna do it in a cartoony style. So look for a uh, Kickstarter for The Mermaids of Neverland someday, and uh, Peter Pan the Vampire 4 on Kickstarter someday. Who knows when that'll be? I really need to get more motivated, get that figured out. And my father and I, and I have been working on a bathroom for my daughters, building it in the basement from scratch. Uh, so far, all we've got is a 
shower and a toilet in a box and we need to put that bathroom together all sorts of stuff like that it's crazy stuff and i've got a kiln working but my wife doesn't want me to fire it up because she does she thinks i'll burn the house down running a kiln it's crazy but uh yeah i've been we got some pottery stuff i got some glazes and clay need to make some stuff uh i i was really into pottery when i was in high school and now my daughters are in high school and loving ceramics class and yeah so i i need to get the kiln done but my wife wants want, wants me to build a uh, cinder block building out away from the house to do that in i don't know what she's worried about because kilns are meant to be they're made to get hot and uh, stuff like that anyway that's what i've been doing lately uh there's been no conventions so I can't really do that. I even got turned down by my local convention, and I've reached out to Emerald City Comic Con and Denver Comic Con, but I don't know. Money-wise, maybe I might not be able to go do those and uh, stuff like that. We've got our stimulus check, and my wife and I are talking about taking the whole family, even the daughter that moved out, off to Hawaii, because I, I lived there for a little while, uh, serving a mission uh, in my uh, church the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They send out missionaries and yeah, I spent two, I spent some years in Hawaii on my mission. Uh, that's why I kind of have an affinity for Hawaiian culture and stuff like that. But yeah, I, we're uh, looking into going back to Hawaii, taking the whole family and I'm pretty sure it's completely changed because that was way back in 97 and 98. No idea what what kind of changes Hawaii's gone through since then. I know uh, just about three years ago, a lava eruption uh, took out half of the neighborhood where I used to live, so crazy stuff. And uh, yeah, and I've got an anniversary coming up with my wife. We have been married 22 years since 99, and uh, I'm excited for that. Uh, we're just gonna go to the next town over in a hotel and uh, have some fun without kids and stuff. You know how that is. Uh, anniversary stuff. Go out to eat. Well, get takeout and eat in the hotel. Something like that. Who knows? Um, you don't need to hear any of that. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, uh, that's what's been going on in my life. It's really crazy, hectic right now. So, uh, all that. Now, now that that's all out of the way, uh, if you have a comic book in any comic book on uh, on a store or whatever let me know about it if you have a Kickstarter running for an independent comic uh, let me know about it I I am really loving independent comics and uh, I want to see what you guys out there are making and I want to shout it out to the world what I just read and uh, so if you've got something that you think people need to hear about let me know I'll check it out I'll back it I'll I'll give you shout outs whatever uh, just let me know what you've got going on and uh, let me know about your comic books not even just comic books if you've got a podcast going that talks about any comics let me know about it um, I need to get a little better at uh, listening to those and watching those there's a YouTube show for Sierra Nova comics that I need to get more into watching and uh, so that's on my to-do list Check out those things. Uh, Sierra Nova Comics, they do some awesome stuff. They've got a platform with a lot of comic books on it, so check it out. And uh, let me know about anything you've got going on. What else have we got here? So that's the end of my show. Yep. Cool stuff. Thank you for watching. Gary Brantner of Renner Studios Comics. And yeah. Do let me know about anything you've got going on. Oh, might as well shout out my own thing for a, a second here. Uh, so as you know, Ren Art Studios Comics, I'm wearing my own merchandise, uh, I make Peter Pan the Vampire Comics, and they are on IndiePlanet.com right now. If you go there, you can buy the hard copies for $4, or you can di get the digital downloads for free. That's three free comic books you can download to your phone, tablet, computer, and read for free. And even the free downloads, that helps me out. It helps me in the algorithm. Algorithm. That's a word, right? Uh, it helps me to get seen. So do me a favor. Check out Peter Pan the Vampire at IndiePlanet.com. 
search for it as Peter Pan the Vampire or Rent Narb Studios or Gary Brantner. All that fun stuff. Uh, it would really do me, a, it would really make me happy too. Every time I see those emails from Indie Planet saying uh, another copy of Peter Pan the Vampire was downloaded, it makes me happy. It makes, it cheers me up if I'm at work and I'm having a really bad day and check my emails at break. It seriously does me a lot to uh, see an email that someone has downloaded my comics. It would even be a lot better if you uh, just gave me a shout out on uh, any of the social medias, say on Facebook or Twitter, say, hey, Rentnarb, I just read your Peter Pan the Vampire. I loved it or I hated it, whatever. Just let me know what you think. Um, let me know what I'm doing right or wrong. And uh, thank you. Do check out my uh, comic books. That would really mean a lot to me. Thank you for watching my show. Follow me on all the socials as Rentnarb Studios Comics. I'm on Redbubble. That's where I get my shirts. Redbubble.com as Gary Brantner. If you go to Redbubble and search Rentnarb, I'm sure you'll see a lot of this little green alien. And uh, I'm on Kickstarter as Rentnarb Studios Comics. And I'm on DeviantArt as Rentnarb, but I don't ever open DeviantArt anymore. And what else am I on? Facebook as Rentnarb Studios Comics. And obviously the Twitters as Rentnarb Studios Comics. So check me out on all the platforms. There might even be some I'm forgetting. But uh, anyway, I've rambled on long enough. It's time to sign off and push the stop button.